so um, today I was thinking about making a video about um, coils and spark plugs on Subarus. So there's a stigma or a misconception that it's like a very difficult job, which I can understand why people would think that because everything's kind of in line with the frame rails. But there's a couple of like tricks and stuff that I found out that make it a lot easier. So I'm going to show you guys those today so you're not like scared to do it and have to take it to a shop and stuff because um, if you know what you're doing and I've done it probably three times now um, you can get it out in like less than an hour. I'm going to show you guys what I do to uh, remove those coils and spark plugs. Alright so I got the car heating up in the background um, so I'm going to show you all the tools you need. So these tools are the like spark plug specific job tools and these are just other tools that you need but um, Basically, this is just to take the battery off. It's a 10 millimeter socket extension on a quarter inch drive ratchet. This is a, I believe, 12 inch extension with a 10 millimeter socket. Um, that's to take the air box out. This is a 10 millimeter wrench, also to take the air box off. And then um, we got three eighths inch drive ratchet, um, a five eighths inch swivel um, spark plug wrench, uh, this one is a gasket type. I don't know if you can see in there, but um, if you have a, if you can get a magnet one, that's better. Um, and then we have a three inch extension and a one inch extension. So with these tool, oh, 12 millimeter socket as well. With these tools, you can get the coils and the spark plugs out no problem. Uh, so it's, you don't have to have a ton of weird, crazy equipment to get the spark plugs out. Just this stuff. So right now I just have the car um, heating up getting to operating temp um, the reason for that being is the reason I'm pulling the spark plugs out is because I'm doing a uh, compression test so I did a compression test already um, but I did a cold compression test which is not a bad thing but if you do a hot compression test and then followed by a cold compression test when the car cools down uh, it'll tell you if it's the rings is the problem so I did a cold compression test and a wet compression test where you just shoot a little bit of oil into the cylinder uh, and I got the same results. So I got on the passenger side of the engine. I got um, 125 psi on both cylinders and then on the driver side I got 50 on cylinder 2 and 105 on cylinder uh, 4 so That means there's something up with that and I was having a misfire issue. That's why I'm checking all this stuff so I'm gonna go through do the hot compression test and then if the results from the hot compression test are like 10% higher than the cold compression test then I can say that it's probably the rings or something related to the pistons if it's the same which it was with the wet compression test uh, it's a good uh, good chance that it's the valves or like are out of adjustment or something so I got a valve cover gasket um, so if the compression test comes back that it's the valves then I'll do the valve job and I'll check the valve clearances and figure out what size shims I need and then I'll go grab those. But, um, but yeah, right now we're just letting it heat up, get it ready to um, do the compression test. All right, so that should be warm enough to get it going. Um, so basically, the idea of what you're trying to do here is, um, so let me, okay. So if you look down there, see okay so right there that's the coil and there's one right there as well now if you take a look you see that's the frame rail right there and it's in line with that so you think oh it's gonna be really hard to get that out uh, it just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of uh, flexibility but um, that's about it so um, what you want to do is you want to remove anything that is in the way here so some Subarus have a like a washer reservoir um, in this area as well, but my car just has a battery that's in the way. So I pull my battery, I already got the tie down strap off uh, on this side. Uh, you see there's a lot of stuff that seems to be in the way, but pretty much if you remove this air box, uh, you don't even have to remove this hose, but just the air box and the snorkel part, you get a big cavity that you can reach all the, uh, the coils and, uh, and spark plugs from there. The reason I'm doing this is because um, like I said before, I had a cylinder two misfire, and um, it's still misfiring a little bit. But uh, I did a compression test, and I seen that it was low. I did a wet compression test, seeing that it didn't change. So 
we were going about and assuming that the problem was my, uh, my valves. So that being said, that the problem was the valves, um, I uh, had to go out this weekend to get the car smogged. Uh, and I drove probably, which isn't a good idea to drive that much on a car that's misfiring, but it only misfired at idle. So I was, I drove to, um, I drove like 320 miles, did a little bit of a road trip and I filled up with like new good gas and the car stopped misfiring, uh, almost entirely. So uh, it was misfiring a little bit here, but it's still an issue, but, um, I figure I might as well run another compression test just to see if it, if it changed. Um, you know, it can't hurt. So we're going to do another compression test and then continue with the regularly scheduled program of just getting the valves out and stuff. Okay, so uh, now with the air box removed, you can see, where is it? Right there. So you can have a pretty much straight shot to the cylinders one and three coils right there. And then this other side, battery's gone. Um, straight shot to two and four. These are the easier ones to get to. Um, cylinder one's pretty easy to get to as well. Um, cylinder three's a little bit more difficult. So... I'm going to show you the, I guess, procedure on, on this side since it's probably a little bit easier to see. But uh, basically the first step is to unplug the harness. So, um, a lot of these harnesses are brittle, but this one's a brand new harness, so it's not brittle. Um, so, I'll get that one off camera. But yeah, unplug the harness, move it out of the way. Now, the only thing that holds this coil to the valve cover is that 12 millimeter bolt right there. To get to that, all you need is your ratchet and a 12 millimeter bolt. And none of these should be like crazy tight. So yeah, there we go. Just broke it loose and then you can thread it out the rest of the way by hand. And with all these spark plug uh, coils and stuff, you want to thread them in by hand. Um, thread them out by hand probably doesn't really matter all that much, but thread them in by hand and then just snug them down is all you need. So once the bolt's loose, it just it stays in there, so you're not going to pull the bolt out. But now, um, sometimes you need to grab a flathead and, and pry it out, but these have been in and out quite a few times in the past few days that it doesn't matter. Rotate it 180 degrees and pull it out. So that's the first coil to get out. The coil was in like this. Um, so I popped it loose so it was free of the spark plug. And I turned it like this so that I could pull it up and out. So with a lot of these um, coils, uh, the way you get them out is by turning them. You just kind of got to fiddle around and see which way they pop out. But that's how you get that one out. And then you want to lay them out. If you're doing diagnostics test, you want to make sure you know which one's which. So I just lay them out on the porch. Um, in the way the engine's laid out. So cylinder four, same deal. Come in here with the ratchet, break it loose, and then we can just thread it out the rest of the way by hand. Okay, so this one's off the spark plug. And this one actually wants to fall down. So I'm gonna rotate it. I think I can get this one up from the top. Let's see if I can get you a shot. There we go. So you just gotta turn it, and that's all that's the trick to it. And then lay it on the porch where it goes. Um, that was only like five minutes, and I got two coils out already. Two bolts are loose now. 
and then they can come out. This uh, this side's really really warm. The other side wasn't as warm. But you see, you just pull on the bolt and it's twist it 180 and pop it out. So there's cylinder one. Set that right there. And now you gotta pull this guy out. Now my hand is hot. Okay. This one you kind of have to like rotate and pull towards the front of the engine. And it's out. So now we got all the coils out. That was, yeah, probably 10 minutes if you count out the time that I was filming. Maybe less. Okay, so for the front cylinders being one and two, it seems to work the best is um, your swivel, the three inch extension on a low profile three eighths inch drive ratchet. Um, I don't know for sure if this one works on the cylinder one, but um, we'll check again. But it definitely works on two. And then for the backs, you're just gonna do this with the one inch extension onto your ratchet, and those work up for the backs um, and the rest of them too. But this just makes it a little bit easier having the longer extension. You're just gonna wanna kinda finagle that dude in there. Until you feel it seat on the socket. That one was a bit tight, but uh, this is what makes the universal neat is that you can do this stuff and it's rotating. Instead of having to just square it up on the thing and jam it between the frame rail, you can just do this. And then it's going to get to a certain point where it doesn't want to ratchet anymore. Just pull the ratchet off, and then you have that guy hanging out and you can just thread it out the rest of the way by hand like so and then there's a grommet or a magnet which is the better one um, that holds the spark plug into the socket so when you pull it out it stays in there you don't have to fish the spark plug out so let me get a better look at this so I'm not a master spark plug reader, but I think that's a pretty good spark plug. Um, these probably only have like 10,000 miles on them. But um, yeah, then I'm going to just put this with the uh, corresponding coil. So yeah, for the back ones, you use the inch and the 5 eighths. I already broke it loose, so I'm just going to come in there and thread it out the rest of the way by hand. Or wait. So let me show you how this one fits in there. So you kind of got to kink the socket and get it in there. And then, so that's how, that's how far it goes in. That's why you got to have the one inch extension and then you break it loose and you can cut it out. Okay, so I got my compression tester here um, with the proper sized adapter. Um, so all you gotta do is finagle this in here. Um, cylinder two was the only one that was misfiring. Uh, four a little bit, so it could be a head gasket as well, but I'm gonna test two right now. That's the one I care about the most. So yeah, once you get to a point, you can feel that it's threaded in and then you just gotta keep twisting it until you can stop twisting it. Uh, compression tester hooked up, um, put that in a good spot, battery's reconnected. Um, so on newer cars, to do a compression test, uh, you don't have to disable the fuel pump or unplug injectors or anything, you just have to put your foot to the floor on the gas pedal, and then mine and I have to, you also have to do the clutch, and then start it, and then it'll cut off the injectors, and then it just does the compression. So, I don't know if you guys seen that or not, but it's reading 85 PSI. It was reading 50 last time I tested it, hot, 
So, um, so far not looking good for my rings. Um, that may be the issue. I was hoping it was the valves, but uh, I guess we gotta wait till it goes cold and then uh, try it again. Uh, see if that's the issue. So unless my compression ratio went up as I was driving it, because the more I drove it, the better the gas I put in it, the least it was misfiring. Um, I was thinking it was a tight valve, but uh, maybe there was carbon buildup on the valve making it tight, and then the good gas cleaned it off, the lot of driving cleaned it off. I don't know, but uh, we'll see what the cold compression test reads. Hopefully it's not my rings, because that would be bad. So, so yeah, we just gotta wait till it gets cold, and I'll be back then, and we'll do another compression test. Alright, so car's cold, um, so we're gonna try it again. the fuck? What the hell is that about? Alright, so as you can tell, um, I already cleared it, but um, the compression ratio was now 90. So uh, what's supposed to happen is, is that you do a hot compression test and you get a higher number and then you do a cold compression test and it's 10% lower, then you have a bad ring set. But the compression ratio was 50. I drove the car, I noticeably felt it driving better, and then now it's 85 when I did the hot test, and then it read 90 when I did the cold test. So I let it cool off for about an hour, and uh, you know everything's cool to the touch. I could stick my hand down inside the cylinder and it's not hot, so that's not the problem. So I. I guess I'm going to have to uh, consult the forums again. Because I don't really know what that means. It might just make it confirm the valves or... I have no idea. So, I guess I'll do an update video once I figure that out. But, uh, basically, spark plugs from this point is just put them back in the way you found them out. Put the clothes back in, plug them in. Put the airbox back in, put the battery back in, and you're good to go. Ready to rip. Alright, so hopefully that video helps you out with your spark plug or coil issues. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, crack into it. I'm not the best mechanic ever, so if I can do it, you can do it too. Uh, it's not too complex. But uh, you just got to make sure you thread them in by hand. Make sure you're not cross-threading anything. Um, just be safe when you do it. But the actual technique, it just has to have patience. Um, you have to move your hands in weird ways sometimes, but that's about it. Uh, I hope it helped at least one of you out there uh, with your Subaru issues. Um, I still got to figure out what mine is, but uh, whatever the case may be, I will update you guys on that. And if there's another job I have to do maintenance-wise, I will update you on that too. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.